Unlike the predictability of a Bond film, if there's one thing that is certain right now, it's uncertainty. And that is definitely true when it comes to wealth protection. Most experts agree that diversification is key in the current climate. But how do you diversify with uncorrelated assets? Well, one solution is today's sponsor, Masterworks. Founded by a top 100 art collector and tech entrepreneur, they've created a way to invest in blue chip art, a market that is usually reserved for millionaires. Masterworks democratizes the art market by giving people like you and me access to the type of investment that millionaires and billionaires have been enjoying for generations. With Masterworks, you can buy shares that represent an investment in iconic works by artists such as Andy Warhol, Cause, or Banksy. It's obviously an interesting platform, but some may think that it's too expensive to get access to. Well, I'm going to put this notion to rest. Here's how Masterworks does it. Masterworks research team analyzes over 60,000 data points to find financially attractive works that they believe will appreciate in value. Then, Masterworks acquires paint paintings ranging from $1 million to $30 million and securitizes them by filing a public offering with the SEC. While no one can predict the future and the fact that past performance is not indicative of future results, contemporary art prices have appreciated in value by 14% for the last 25 years. In fact, contemporary art prices outpace the S&P 500 total return by 164% from 1995 to 2021. You can gain priority access by clicking our link in the description. You can get started and manage your account all online. So go ahead, check it out. And as always, in everything related to investment, tread carefully. Nothing is risk-free. Have you ever heard of the Pegasus spy system developed in Israel? I'm sure many of you have heard of the Pegasus system, if only because we've mentioned it here on Visual Politics several times. For example, in this video, we tell you how Saudi Arabia used precisely this software developed by the Israeli company NSO Group to spy on Jamal Khashoggi, the journalist who was murdered inside the Saudi consulate in Istanbul in 2018. This is something that was denied again and again by the NSO Group, but that finally could be accredited to the framework of the so-called Project Pegasus on the 18th of July, 2021. We are talking about research conducted by a consortium of journalists belonging to 17 media groups from various countries around the world. An investigation whose conclusions, believe me, would make the hair on the back of your neck stand on end. Private Israeli spyware used to hack cell phones of journalists and activists worldwide. The Pegasus Project has investigated the leak of a list of 50,000 phone numbers. These 50,000 phone numbers would have been tagged by several governments as targets to be spied on by this software of Israeli origin. Specifically, the investigation points directly to the governments of 10 different countries, which have allegedly misused this software to persecute journalists, opponents, and political activists without any controls in place. For example, one of them is Saudi Arabia. And yes, among the numbers spied on was that of Khashoggi's wife. Pay attention here because we are also talking about espionage at the highest level. For example, you all know that India and Pakistan are two countries with nuclear weapons that get along terribly, right? Well, look at how things stand. Pakistan wades into Pegasus Row, accuses India of spying on Imran Khan, demands UN probe. Imran Khan is none other than the Prime Minister of Pakistan. And of course, the Indian government is one of the 10 governments targeted by the Pegasus Project. However, this whole story goes much further than that. I assure you that after this video, many of you will begin to see the 007 movies with completely different eyes. So without further ado, we have a few questions to answer. What does the Pegasus software consist of? And what exactly has it been used for? More importantly, how has has the new Israeli government reacted to the Pegasus project revelations? In this video, we will answer all these questions, but first, let's take a look at some history. Spectre. If you've seen the Bond movie Spectre, you'll recall that the film's subplot revolves around a massive espionage program that goes by the name of the Nine Eyes. In the film, the nine major powers of the world negotiate its implementation to fight terrorism. Well, it seems that some computer engineer from the NSO group in Israel must have seen the movie, and as we say around here, no sooner said than done. 
The latest technological developments from the NSO group allow access to private phones by way of zero-click attacks. That is, the victim of espionage does not even have to open a malicious link to fall into the clutches of the software. Furthermore, from the moment the phone is infected with Pegasus, the paying customer can take complete control of the device. This allows him or her to extract the phone's messages, photos, and emails. It also allows that person to record your calls, secretly activate your cameras or microphones, and to read the content of encrypted messaging apps such as WhatsApp, WhatsApp, Telegram, or Signal. For example, in order to get their hands on WhatsApp conversations, this Israeli group developed a program that allowed them to precisely emulate network traffic in the application. This allowed them to transmit malicious code that was not detected by WhatsApp servers. Just look at the reaction of the all-powerful Facebook, or Meta, or whatever it's called now, when it discovered the ruse. WhatsApp blames and sues mobile spyware maker NSO Group over its zero-day calling exploit. This lawsuit was filed in October 2019, almost two years after the Pegasus Project scandal broke. At the time, WhatsApp indicated that the Israeli company had attempted to hack at least 1,400 users. This should serve as a wake-up call for technology companies, governments, and all internet users. Tools that enable surveillance into our private lives are being abused, and the revelation of this technology into the hands of irresponsible companies and governments puts us all at risk. Will Cathart, head of WhatsApp. The fact is that the approximately 50,000 telephone numbers on the list investigated by the Pegasus Project include a large number of pro-democracy activists, businessmen, public figures, and numerous political figures, often, of course, opponents of the government of the day. Then, another significant group on this list is that of journalists. For example, the list shows that more than 180 journalists belonging to such leading media outlets as the Financial Times, the New York Times, The Economist, and Reuters, among many others, have been spied on. And if this is already very serious, imagine how dangerous it can be to be spied on as a journalist in a country like Mexico, a real hell for freedom of the press. Well, you don't need to imagine it. There is the very real case of Cecilio Pineda. A Mexican journalist murdered in 2017 was previously spied on by the Pegasus software. You see, one of the abilities that Pegasus has is that by allowing access to the phone's sensors, the software's clients can also obtain a record of a person's movements and track their location in real time with pinpoint accuracy. In this way, Cecilio Pineda was killed at a car wash. He had been targeted by a Mexican client weeks before his murder. I'm sure you can guess what was never found. That's right, his phone. Mexico was the country that spied on the most phone numbers with this system, at least according to the published list. For example, it is known that during the Peña Nieto administration, several government agencies used Pegasus. We are talking about more than 15,000 mobile phones. Among the targets were numerous journalists, social activists and political leaders as prominent as current president André Manuel López Obrador. The situation, by the way, gets a whole lot worse when analysing the case of Tomás Zerón. We are talking about the man identified as the key figure within the Peña Nieto administration for deciding government purchases of surveillance technologies. That is, the person who thought spying on 15,000 Mexicans was a great idea. Well, this official has been wanted for years for irregularities committed in the investigation of the Ayotzinapa case, the disappearance of 43 students overnight. Tomas Cerrone played a decisive role in covering up what happened in Iguala, and now he seems to have taken advantage of his business contacts. Tomas Zeron, wanted by the Mexican justice system, takes refuge in Israel. The NSO group claims that the software has only been sold to governments and security agencies in some 40 countries for the sole purpose of preventing crime and terrorist acts. But of course, just as with Spectre, the danger of Pegasus is what happens when it all falls into the wrong hands. The Israeli company fervently assures that it studies the human rights record of its customers before selling them software. NSO has even published excerpts from contracts with its customers, stipulating that they must only use its products for criminal and national security investigations. But of course, the point is that once the software is commercialized, NSO has no control over which research is legitimate and which is not. And it is clear that many governments do not intend to honor their contracts with NSO. That said, I think it's time to learn which other governments have been targeted by the Pegasus Project, don't you? Well, listen up. On Her Majesty's Secret Service. 
What is most striking is that the conclusions of the Pegasus project align perfectly with Israel's foreign policy in recent years. For example, at the beginning, we were telling you about the links between the Pegasus software and Saudi Arabia, a connection that can be seen as part of the fight against Iran, their great common enemy. But visual politics fans, that's not all. The investigation points directly to how Pegasus has been used by the Sunni monarchies, with which, surprise, surprise, Israel has recently managed to normalize diplomatic relations. We are talking about Bahrain, Morocco, and the United United Arab Emirates. In fact, according to the research, these last two countries complete the podium of the rulers who have spied on the most phones using Pegasus. And once again, the biggest problem for both Israel and the NSO group is that you never know what interests your client may have. Project Pegasus, Emmanuel Macron's mobile phone in Morocco's sites. For example, those of you who will regularly follow visual politic will surely remember this past video. In it, we told you that Morocco was using Israeli software to spy on thousands of phones, most of them belonging to the Algerian elite. Then, Pegasus has also been taken up by good friends of Netanyahu. I am referring in this case to the governments of Brazil, Hungary and India, and also those of Azerbaijan, Kazakhstan and Rwanda, which are not exactly role model countries. With this in mind, it appears that agreements on cyber surveillance were one of Netanyahu's main assets when negotiating with foreign leaders. Anyway, that's politics. The thing is, research suggests that Viktor Orban's Hungarian government uses Pegasus in its so-called war against the media, targeting investigative journalists. Of course, of course, there are countries where journalists are worse off, like Morocco. There, for example, is the case of Omar Radi, who is currently imprisoned. Visual politic fans, we are not talking about a minor issue. Intimidating and harassing critics is now easier and cheaper thanks to technology. And it is clear that, if nothing changes, intelligence and security agencies will continue to use this type of software to spy on their citizens. And that's not all. It can also happen that you end up creating a state within the state itself. You don't follow me? We'll take a look. Project Pegasus, the king of Morocco and his entourage on the list of potential spyware targets. Well, a month before the Pegasus project scandal broke, a new government was formed in Israel, bringing the Netanyahu era to an end. Well, a pause at least. The point is that the new executive found itself in a lot of hot water. Israel's 2007 defense export control law requires companies to undergo a rigorous licensing process. It was passed after the United States complained that Israel was selling arms to China. But of course, looking at what has happened, it doesn't seem that the controls have been efficient, exactly. This is something they are already beginning to realize in Israel, even within the government itself. Diaspora Affairs Minister, NSO spyware scandal causing harm to Israel's diplomatic interest. Okay, this man is not exactly the most important minister in the executive. After all, in Israel, there are 27 ministers in an eight-party coalition executive. But hey, his complaint is there. By the way, the publication of the findings of the Pegasus project has been a direct torpedo to the NSO group, and not only for the company itself. Its main shareholder since early 2019 has been Novel Pina Capital, a British private equity firm that bought a majority stake in the Israeli group. In fact, at the time, the implied valuation of the transaction placed NSO in the executive unicorn club. That is, startups reaching a value of more than $1 billion. Well, the espionage scandal has also shaken the owners directly. US consultants lined up to run fund that owns Israeli spyware company NSO. The largest investor in Novel Pina Capital is none other than the public pension fund of the state of Oregon, USA. A fund whose managers are now very concerned about the future of their investments. But having said that, the question is, what does the new Israeli government intend to do? Well, listen up. Live and let die. The cybersecurity industry is booming in Israel. According to Weil Ventures, a venture capital firm, startups from the Hebrew state raised a record of almost $9 billion in 2021. In addition, nine companies from the Hebrew country entered the select club of the world's unicorns. The success of this industry also extends into the political arena. The new Israeli government has close ties to cybersecurity. This plays in the NSO group's favor. For example, the current prime minister, Naftali Bennett, became a billionaire by selling the online security company specializing in in the banking sector that he had founded. But it turns out Bennett is not the only one. 
Ayelet Shaked, Bennett's right-hand woman and current Minister of the Interior, is a software engineer who made a career in Tel Aviv's high-tech industry. She is also a close friend of Shiri Dolev, the president of NSO. Meanwhile, the Minister of Defense, retired General Benny Gantz, was the president of Fifth Dimension, a company that specialized in tracking smartphones through spyware for police and anti-terrorist purposes. Fifth Dimension is now defunct, but another guy who was high up in the company, and even a big shot in the Mossad, Ram Ben Barak, currently chairs the Defense and Foreign Affairs Committee of the Israeli Parliament, which is precisely the committee in charge of overseeing the country's cyber exports. As you can see, the ties between the private cybersecurity sector and public institutions are very close. So what happened in early November leaves the Israeli government in a very uncomfortable position. U.S. blacklists Israeli firm NSO Group for use of spyware. We are talking about the same trade sanctions blacklist on which Huawei, the large Chinese telecommunications company, is on. This means that the use of U.S. technology in NSO Group products is totally prohibited. The Israeli government's reaction to the Pegasus software was the same as always. Ensure that all Israeli cyber exports are regulated by the government in compliance with international agreements. This was recently stressed by Yair Lapid, the current foreign minister who will become Israel's next prime minister in accordance with government rotation agreements. I don't think there's another country in the world which have such strict rules uh, according to cyber warfare, warfare uh, and uh, that is um, imposing those rules um, more than Israel and we will continue to do so. However, the Biden administration's move has had direct consequences for NSO. Moody's downgraded the company's debt rating to junk bonds. According to the credit rating agency, NSO is heavily dependent on the new sales of licenses for its software, something that will be increasingly difficult to achieve given the measures taken by the United States. So, bad news for Oregon's future pensioners. Israel's NSO group at risk of defaulting on $500 million after US blacklisting. The latest company to sue the NSO group for spying on users of its devices is none other than Apple. International pressure is mounting. We are talking about perhaps one of the great failures or mistakes in Israel's technology policy. Despite this, it is surprising that hardly any action is being taken. But wait a minute, because on 18th of January 2022, a bombshell news item came to light that could change everything. Israel police uses NSO's Pegasus to spy on citizens. Among the victims appear to be some mayors and political activists, as well as former government employees. They were reportedly able to be spied on without any search or wiretap warrant authorizing the surveillance. It is assumed that Israel will now have to take action. Visual politic fans, technology is advancing and improving our lives. Israel's contribution to this evolution is simply formidable. But sometimes, things can get out of hand. This looks like a case of a huge flaw in the security protocols. After all, putting software like this in the hands like the individuals we've seen doesn't seem like the best idea, does it? The question now is, what do you think Israel should do with the Pegasus software? You can leave me your answers in those comments. And as always, if you found the video interesting, please like it. Don't forget to subscribe to Visual Politics. Tick. Best regards, and I'll see you next time.